All right, the back is ready to go. And now we can start ignoring the back and think about the front. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Sandra, why on earth did you not do the texture before you put all this enamel on the back? Because when we go to put this texture on, you notice there's a lot of enamel on the back and there is exactly zero enamel on the front. So you do run the risk of cracking because there's a lot of pressure from this enamel. And I will say to you, the reason I don't add my texture first, because it does add a little bit of pressure, is sometimes in the kiln when things get heated up, um, your enamel goes kind of white and it loses the, uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough that it's frustrating if I put a beautiful texture on there and it's gone kind of matte and white. Um, so I like to leave the option open that if I need to get in there with some sanding or any kind of like polishing bits, I haven't spent a lot of time doing texture. But we can see that it's still nice and shiny so we don't have to worry about that in this particular instance. But we do have to be careful about cracking the back. And so I'm just gonna get a little tea towel Let's see if I can, there we go. And which will help support, I'm gonna fold it just like that. There we go. Which will support the piece while we are doing our texture. And you can see, I'm gonna be doing, this is a texture method. It's a procedural texture, I suppose would be the name um, that I use for a lot of insect wings and it it's a really pretty one so you're gonna this is if this is the only thing that you get out of this video is how to do this texture I think it'll have been a good video so let me show you how I do the texture for a wing pattern um, because it's actually very straightforward so what I have done and it hinges on you having done your wires fairly precisely I went ahead and cut out the the wires from here and I'm going to because it's you could get some of that tracing stuff um, but what I like to do is I just want to make sure it fits you can see I've trimmed it I don't really care about this stuff down here so I trimmed it so it fit nice and evenly in there and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little piece of tape to kind of hold help hold it in place but you're also welcome to use a little um, rubber cement if you want but I'm just gonna snug it right like that and a little bit of tape. There we go. And that should kind of hold it in place. And how are we going to transfer these, but with an X-Acto blade, carefully, a careful X-Acto blade. Let me move all this stuff that I don't need out of the way. And I'm just going to start, and I'm actually gonna start, cause I'm gonna be cutting this paper. So you don't wanna start on this end and have it fall away. So I'm going to just hold it down and then just right where the line is, I'm going to use my X-Acto and go right over each of these lines, just like that. You can see it's falling apart, but that's fine. That's, that's what's supposed to happen. And this will give you, it's actually it's already starting the texture just like that. Let me go ahead and make sure the focus is right. There we go. Where do we go? We got this one. We got this. Watch your fingers. And I'm not going super heavy, but I'm just being real careful, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and watch your fingers again. right there you don't have to get every everything but it'll help you just All right, now we can remove whatever paper is left and see that we have a really accurate, let me just, there we go, a really accurate tracing. And we've already gotten started with our texture. Look at that, really nice. So now we've got, let me get all this little paper out of the way. 
and so we've got our baseline so we know where the wires are and now we're going to use a scribe and you can use I'm going to use this kind of double-sided scribe but any scribe that you have this is a nice scribe that's pretty comfortable um, they sell them basically it's anything that has this is also a comfortable one because it's more like a pen it's not quite as sharp it's a more of a, a dull blade but I use these for all of my scribing needs and I'm going to make sure everything is good and so for my texture I'm going to be following the lines of that I just scribed in and going alternating scratches and I'll show you what I mean and I'm going to start and it doesn't even really matter maybe I'll start here in the center just like that and I'm just going to pick a direction and I'm going to fill it fill that entire little cloisonne area just like that and then I'm going to kind of go a different direction for let me just there we go a different direction in each one so I'm just just and then so that one was that way so this one is going to be just different and this is really going to cap capture the light and give it that kind of extra sparkle you can already see see how it's picking up that so I'm going to go ahead and continue through the whole thing. All right, now look, look at that texture. Look how it just really captures the light and it just shimmers. It's really nice. And the last little bit is looking at our little picture. Um, he's got kind of like a fuzzy little body. So I'm gonna do a little texture just along, ow, oh, as I poke myself, <laughs> two-sided. See, I love this one and I wish I had a bigger handle because it's not super comfortable. And I'm just gonna go ahead and right in this middle, do a little bit of feathering. It's kind of just a little bit of scratching to make him, his body has a little bit of texture. So you can see just, just like that. And that looks really good. Now the next, oh, I see I missed a spot right here. I missed it, one little crosshatch. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And because, um, I mean, it's just, you get a lot of bang for your buck with this kind of texturing, which is nice. And now we are ready to put our clear coat down and then glue our wires. All right, and we're gonna talk a little bit about um, fluxes, because I see a lot of people having sadness online with different kinds of fluxes and them going yellow and it's all terrible. Um, most fluxes are terrible. 99% of fluxes in my mind are terrible and I'm always trying new ones. Um, the exception to the rule, and we'll be using both of them, is, um, I should have had it ready to go, uh, G110. This is Nihon Shippo. Uh, it's a flux specifically for silver, and I like to use it as my base coat. That being said, it's still, it can still sometimes go a little bit yellow, which doesn't really matter so much because look, yellow is kind of the big color here. Um, so if I ever, I don't actually use this a lot, but we are using it for this because it's a good solid coat. And especially when you're first getting started, um, you tend to be a little heavy handed with the first coat and if you're using a color you might go a little bit dark but I, I'm going to give you a couple other options if you are having the worst time with your fluxes skip the fluxes throw them in don't throw them in the garbage set them aside gently and look at I know you've made sample strips look at some of your sample strips um, look for a color that is super, super pale and not at all reactive to the silver. I've chosen two. If I was going to not use this flux, say that I was completely out, I sold it all, it was all gone, I would go look at my sample strips and I would either pick 
this one, this is a Neon Shippo 760, I think that's A, it's Platinum Blonde. And I would use this as my base coat because it would just play really well with the base coat. It, you know, we, it's gonna be a thin coat, it's not gonna go that dark. Um, and I think this would be my number one choice if I wasn't going to be using a Flux. Uh, my number two choice, which I know this seems a little counterintuitive because this is all yellow, would be, this is kind of what I, I actually use as a base coat for probably 90% of all of my work. I use this as a base coat. This is N55, very pale blue. It's a Nino Mia, but I know that there's also a real pale blue Nihon Shippo, um, which is about the same color. And as long as it plays really well with the silver, you can use it as a base coat. Um, and the thin, you know, it's gonna be one little thin sifting. You're not even gonna notice the color very much. Um, this color might look a little warm and this color might look a little cool. And that's pretty much the difference. So that is just giving you options because there are, you know, there's no great answer. There's no magic bullet to get a flux to not go yellow or splotchy or be weird. Um, but that being said, we're going to use the flux. <laughs> I know it's what I included in the kits. Um, and we're going to use it. Uh, and it, this is definitely the only flux that I would currently use as a base coat. And it's also very important that you sift it before you use it because um, you want it to not be cloudy. All right, now we are ready to put sift on our top coat. And I'm going to, because I still have the, I'm going to use the A1 just because I have it. You could use A3. If you're having trouble with um, it not getting an even coat, you may want to consider using the A3 clear fire, which is a little bit more sticky. I'm going to see if I can get away with this. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. There we go. So we got a little bit, you're wearing your mask and I've got this and I'm going to do it. I like to get everything ready. Although I guess I could probably just set it there. Well, yeah, we'll just set it. I'm obviously fussing more than I need to. And I find the trick to get in an even coat is to use a nice thick, goodly amount just like that, kind of nice. And not wasting, not, not spending too much time fussing. So I got it and then I'm gonna just gently, a very light coat over the whole thing. I like to do just like that much. A very, very light dusting is pretty much all I need. And because this is such a light layer, it's not going to be perfectly smooth when you fire it. It's going to be look just a little bit knobbly, which is fine. Um, and I just kind of got into this habit of doing a real thin base coat, mostly because I don't have a lot of depth to work with and I don't want to fill it all up with uh, a flux, which I don't trust to not go splotchy or yellow. So we're going to let this dry really well and fire it. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and glue our wires on. All right, this came out lovely. It's nice and even. But as I said, it's a thin coat, so it's going to always look a little kind of like, has like a little bit of bumpy texture. That is perfectly fine. There's no yellowing. It's a really nice coat of flux. Like I say, the G110, it's a good flux. Um, and if you find one little bit of troublemaking, if you pull it out and the whole thing looks very, very, very yellow, it might be that you've actually underfired it. So if you pull it out and the whole thing looks like yellow, put it back in the kiln and give it a really good long soak until almost that the trivet is red hot and then pull it out. And chances are that yellow will clear up because underfiring is also a reason that flux um, goes yellow.